Welcome to another episode of my vlog. Uh, we're back for our third installment uh, at CBRE's headquarters at 200 Park Avenue in New York. Thank you, Steve Siegel, for once again hosting us. We hope you'll have us back uh, many more times. Um, so for this episode of the, of the vlog, I thought about doing something a little bit different. You know, so much of what we focus on in CRE Tech and the industry as a whole is all about data and software and analytics and blockchain and blah, 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 blah. And uh, to me, you know, there's some extraordinary innovation happening in the physical world of CRE Tech that I just feel doesn't get enough uh, coverage. So as part of my mission about helping the commercial real estate industry as a whole discover all that's happening in the tech side, I wanted to bring together four founders of some extraordinary startups that are actually building cool things. So it's my pleasure to introduce Felicity of Stratus. Thank you very much. I'm Felicity Mormon with Stratus. Stratus provides smart apartments and intelligent buildings in the multifamily and student housing industry. Uh, we are currently installed on 250,000 apartments and student housing spaces on 1,000 sites across the U.S. and launched in Japan. Great. Welcome. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Carl of PAWS. I must put an asterisk before I introduce Carl in the sense that I am a meditator personally and a huge personal fan of his product. Carl? Yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, my company is Pause. We provide digital meditation space to create an overall uh, happier, healthier workplace experience for employees, tenants worldwide. And Andrew of the newsstand, who's certainly one of the most innovative startups that I have come across in a very long time. Andrew? Yeah, Andrew Deitchman, uh, co-founder, CEO of newsstand. Newsstand is really a lifestyle convenience company. Uh, we combine really cool little convenience stores with a great app um, that really just makes people's days better. We exist in office buildings, in residential buildings, in airports, um, in transportation hubs, and we really combine the digital and physical to do what we call day improvement, just uplift people's days. And uh, finally, it's a great pleasure to introduce Matt, the founder of Waltz. Thank you, Michael. I'm Matt Coppell. I'm CEO of Waltz. Uh, Waltz provides uh, mobile access control for uh, office buildings, uh, as well as um, fare payment uh, solutions for transit. And we really see those two um, coming together as the way that you're able to interact with and move throughout the physical world. Great. Welcome, everybody. So, Felicity, we'll start with you. Um, you got to be crazy to do so, to build things, right? I mean, it's got to be harder, uh, more challenging, more complex. What do they say? Hardware is hard. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's good. it's true. Um, so why why do this? What it, problem are you solving? As if well? there's a need, so you look at the marketplace today and intelligent products, smart products in the build space, and each one has its own app. Each one is a disparate system addressing a different problem than everything else. Um, for us, that just doesn't work for buildings. It may be okay in your smart home, maybe not, but that's, I'll, I'll leave that to single family. In the commercial space, it's simply not acceptable or appropriate. When I think about the fact that there are 49 access platforms in multifamily, specifically in student housing, that, that's impossible. Now you're going to add HVAC systems and automation systems to that number as well. I can't fathom being a property manager today, and that's what hit me. Right. You know, we have to connect these devices in one single app and enable a building-wide perspective, not simply a smart apartment. Right, right, right. It's, it's, I have a passion for it. I love it. So. Great. You can tell. It's terrific. Yeah. And, I, and my hope, of course, is that property managers really can easily impact the net operating income of a building with operating efficiencies that they create using our hardware and right. software combined. Right. Carl, uh, we saw your product at our recent uh, CRE Tech LA event. It was blown away. I know people really enjoyed it. What, what propelled you to get into this uh, particular space? Um, so, I mean, personally, I was, I've always been a, a big proponent of meditation, right? For obviously, well, I would uh, preface this that I, I wasn't doing it originally for spiritual or religious reasons or anything that, you know, is intertwined with the ancient age-old practice that is meditation. I was doing it purely for workplace performance. 
Um, I worked longer hours and was trying to manage stress, get ahead of you know the competition, being the other people I worked with, the other you know when I was in the investment bank, the other banks on a deal. Uh, same thing with real estate. So I did it for purely selfish reasons initially, um, but then I honestly went down like a bigger spiritual path, but more related to pause as a venture. Um, when I was working at my last company, which was an awesome real estate company, we were working on a deal with a, a workspace as a service company you would know um, on how to differentiate their workplace with wellness. Now, yoga is obviously great, but a little overdone, um, and CrossFit and gyms are, carry a hard capital cost, right? So there's nothing, and here I am going down to my car in the middle of the night to meditate at work, wow. right? And getting knocks on the door from, a, from someone looking at a guy, a stressed out kid in a suit, meditating in a car. It's not a good look, right? So I went back up in the elevator. I was strolling around and, and, and I was just thinking to myself, like, we have, you know, uh, all these amenities in the workplace, but there's nothing for, for meditation. So that's where it kind of came from. I pitched it internally. It was well received. And then I realized, why let the people I was working with reap all the benefits as much as I love them, why not right. partner with them as a customer sure. and go from there? And so that was kind of pause was, was born. Makes sense, man. I'm glad you did it. Uh, as I said, blown away by the pride. Uh, Andrew, so, you know, I know of you because you're a legend in the marketing space with, uh, you built Mother into like one of the best marketing firms uh, in the world. What propelled you to get into this commercial real estate uh, space and build the new stand. Is, is that what I'm in? <laughs> I didn't even realize I just showed up in this conference room. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, it's um, it's funny because it, to me, it's actually all connected thread. Um, at the end of the day, when you're working for big clients and they're trying to figure out, you know, how do they get a message across to somebody? It's really about how do you get their time and attention? I mean, that's what your job is um, as, as an agency is like, oh, we have a cool idea that'll stop people in their tracks. And a lot of, you know, advertising, you know, has been around like, stop what you're doing, go to this sale, like, oh, okay. And that level of disruption is really what, you know, marketing in many ways has been. And, you know, it's moved on a little bit, but, you know, now it's moved to a place where, you know, okay, let me put more ads into a feed, you know, for Instagram and stuff like that. And I think part of what inspired me around Newsstand was, you have people that are in their everyday routines. They're on their way to work, they're walking downstairs into the lobby of a building, um, they're doing things, they need basic things. They're thirsty, they need a water, they have a headache, they need Tylenol. Um, and these are actually really important moments. You know, they can be throwaway moments or they could actually be moments where you help somebody in a way that they didn't expect, um, you, you know, turn them on to something really cool and new, um, whether it's a product or a piece of content. And so we wanted to you know, find a way to kind of thread the needle between um, what asset owners, landlords you know, want, which is to have uh, better spaces uh, for the p human beings who are in there. This is about the physical world still. Uh, there's humans that walk into these buildings every day. How do we better serve them, make them happier? Um, and those humans want to be able to have a little bit up-leveled products and in our case services as well. Like you can stop into newsstand and grab a mobile charger if you're a member and take it with you and drop it off the next day. These are basic things that I think people really, you know, uh, need help with. Um, and then there's this world of, of media and advertising which is changing dramatically and brands want to be able to access people um, in a way I think that's really positive um, where they're being helpful. And, you know, yeah, in, in spaces that are captive, you know, we're the only thing that's on the NYC ferry, you know, we're the last thing you're going to see before you get onto an airplane. Um, and yeah, we're downstairs in the lobby of a building or now we're going to be actually upstairs, you know, in an actual office, having your own newsstand using self checkout to be able to make people's days better and help brands reach them and help the asset owner and the company to have a better relationship with um, the humans that are in those spaces every single day. So it all still threads back to like people, how do you get their time and attention and help them? Um, and, and that's kind of what I've always been passionate about. Um, and we're just taking it into a new sphere, I guess called. I love it, man, yeah. I love so. it. Matt, um, you're solving, I think for most of us, one of the biggest problems that we all face when we go visit <laughs> office buildings, which is access. I mean, to every single day, uh, pretty much I'm late because I'm always running behind, but also because I'm standing in line 
getting my you know phone, uh, getting my driver's license out, handing it to them, taking a picture. It's archaic. It hasn't changed forever. You're solving this problem. Where did the idea come from? Yeah, so we actually ended up in commercial real estate as sort of uh, by accident. So um, uh, I started the company when I was in school in my in my dorm room and sort of was so always annoying, interested. By the in, way. Yeah, really. Really. You had to you had to say that. You had to rub yeah. it in. So okay. um, <laughs> yeah. uh, um, the you know I was always interested in transportation and um, decided that I wanted to. Uh, try to replace the, something like the Metro Cart here in New York with with uh, uh, an app or service on your phone. Um, you know, we all sort of have those long waits at the vending machines as well. And um, you know, once we built that product, it was sort of obvious a little bit before that, but definitely once we tried to sell into government, that government is a, a very deliberate, um, conservative. Um, you know, area to sell into, and You're so kind. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, I told you, you don't yeah. have to be. A, this is and um, and so um, you know, we sort of said, well, what what is a similar use case, right? A, a turnstile is a turnstile is a turnstile, whether it's paying to get into the subway or um, having some sort of conditional access to get into some controlled space, whether it's a building or an office suite or or, or an elevator or a parking garage. Um, and so we basically sort of took this same technology, um, removed the value, the money component, and went and sort of tried to sell it to big landlords and were able to get to um, a pretty significant spot there, um, in part because, uh, as, as you mentioned, everybody has to go through this. You know, I think we coincide with another um, sort of up and coming theme in commercial real estate of these tenant experience platforms. And so, um, you know, by everyone or most people having to use our app or, um, or choosing to use our app, we have over 70% adoption rate in daily active users. Um, you know, we're able to enable these um, these other platforms to, to get real adoption um, by by the occupants of that right. building. It was only after we you know got traction in real estate that we sort of figured out well that helps with transit as well because people are. Um, you know, coming from real estate to go to transit or vice versa. And so um, that sort of turns into how can we affect the operations of both? So if we can tell transit that, you know, X number of people are going to be at this station riding this line in this direction at this time, right, that's probably going to be really interesting to them. Or if we can tell um, a building, hey, based on where all these people are in their commute right now, um, you know, your load factor um, in 30 minutes is going to look like this. Um, and so there's sort of a whole, um, this is an overused term, but like smart city component yeah. to where we're able to not only be the consumer side of helping people navigate that and, 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 and sort of make those interactions and that journey more efficient, but also sort of the data and operations side of making those, call it infrastructure, the transit and the real estate, um, sort of more operationally efficient yeah. and valuable yeah. as well. It's great. It's great. I've seen the product in action. It's fantastic. So, you know, I think the theme that I hear from all of you, and Andrew, you mentioned it, we refer to the target market being humans, which I love because I think, you know, I think that's sort of like the new awakening in, in real estate tech is that there are occupants of these buildings, whether it's student housing or multifamily or office or or what have you, and what do we do with the, the, these humans that once they're inside? So how does a human interact with the products that you're building, and what's the experience yeah. like for that? Well, I think it's funny. We talk about the Internet 1.0 being very academic and individualized, and then 2.0 kind of moving to business, things like Facebook and Airbnb, and then 3.0 is going back to machine to machine. And yet, that machine to machine connection that's going to happen here as we embrace some of these faster technologies is really just back to the humans. Right, right. And so it's hugely inspiring to me that the things that we have to think about automating today, either as the company or as the property manager, these things will become more intelligent on their own with our efforts towards that. So, I mean, I think all of this leads to just better humanity. Right. I mean, just a more capable and more enabled human experience. Yeah. I mean, you look at some of the countries that have um, minimum living wage because the work goes away. Right. Not 
it doesn't have to be bad. Right, <laughs> like the right, work right. can go away and enable us to renaissance with one another yeah. as opposed to dig a ditch. Right. You know? Right, right, so right, right. to right. me, it's an evolution of technology yeah. that's enabling this human yeah. capacity, connection. I'm, I'm bullish on yeah, it. Yeah, no, you know? good, me too. Carlos, how, how, do, how do humans interact with the pod? And uh, I mean, again, you know, we were talking about uh, earlier about LA when people just like gravitated towards your pod and it was, it was really amazing to watch them interact with it. So I, I think, you know, so thank you for that. But I, and, I, and I think kind of going off what you were sort of starting to speak to is that, you know, there's a huge, like the way that we interact with real estate it's it, the effect that the physical world has on the human body is undeniable. They said there's a statistic out there that's like 90% of our health outcomes are dictated by the surrounding environment. And it's kind of like, of course that makes sense, yeah, right? So and you spend 70% of your time indoors working. So why, why should the workplace be a place uh, you know, that we go to put our health on hold and then we resume, like honestly, no pun intended, but you hit pause on your health when you go there yeah. and then you then somehow fit in a gym session or going to the yoga, you know, going to yoga, going for a walk afterwards, why can't you pursue your <laughs> career and pursue your health mentally, physically, all at the same time? And to your point, I think there was a statistic out recently in the Wall Street J Journal that said we in the United States work more than ever in the history of humanity as far as hours go. Yeah, so it's, true. it's exponentially more important to have access to things like this that right. allow us to rejuvenate on site and not just push off that that capability yeah and i think that's that's spot on i mean like at the end of the day you know kind of like you're saying at the end of the day, we're dealing with people right and you're seeing hr roles people that we're speaking with regularly it's no longer human resources because that's kind of a <laughs> weird name right you get things like chief people officer right. which obviously makes way more sense yeah. Yeah. um which i think is what everyone on here is trying to do is not necessarily whether it's through hardware or through tech you're trying to provide a product that people can relate to people right. can benefit from and then therefore whether it's it has ramifications in their physical space or beyond right. you know and i'm sure that's the case with you and you too is like you know, and everyone here that, you know, you're providing a product that humans can feel in touch, which is important. But at the end of the day, too, it's got the tech that behind it has a right. much wider reach. But at right. the end of the day, it's all for yeah. individuals. Andrew, I've seen your product in action. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. How, how do people interact with it? Like, you know, give some use case examples of yeah. what I mean, people do with it. First of all, I did 23 and Me recently. I'm, I'm actually, I think, like 0.01%. Um, not human? Not human. Yeah, that's I, I think good. I'm actually. My wife would tell you I'm probably 90% not no, human. No, no. That's like a uh, tiny bit of Neanderthal <laughs> in there. So um, Love you, honey. Uh, Look, <laughs> uh, I, I think, you know, for us, we're really trying to, to tie together, um, you know, mobile digital. I mean, look, at the end of the day, we all are now part machine. It's called our phones. And like everything in my life is on there. I can like ask Siri or whatever stuff and they tell me it. So my brain's gotten bigger. Um, and so we're trying to take what is now really an extension of a human being and tie that to their physical life, right? And what's really interesting to me as I've, because I'm new to the real estate world and retech world or retech, whatever it's called. And what I see is there's a lot of people who are creating technology that isn't necessarily, aren't necessarily tied to the physical world. You know, there's apps and there's, you know, websites and all of this kind of stuff. And I think what we're trying to do is say, well, we're going to have a little shop on the premises and, or it's going to be up on a floor and it's a place where people can get stuff that they need and use the points um, that they earn from checking out content um, and, and try to tie that entire experience together. Because again, we're still physical people and this world of real estate is about the built world. Um, the ways that we're doing that, look, it's as simple as somebody coming into one of our shops at Brookfield Place and it's raining out. And if you're a new stand member, you show your membership card and you sign out an umbrella. It's like a really nice thing to be able to provide it's to people. Makes a big deal, man. Makes a big, makes a, a big difference, you know. I got three kids. I don't have time to remember. Yeah, that. we invented a thing called Swap Charge. It's sort of like City Bike for chargers. And again, same thing. Come in, and there's a lot of technology behind it. There's a whole IoT um, checkout sure. component, all of that kind of stuff that we've built. So I think that's a really good example. What I'm really excited about is uh, kind of new stand for enterprise. We're about to, you know, start. Um, deploying newsstands into corporate offices. We've spent the last year or so building what I think is a really terrific self-checkout 
uh, technology that allows you to use the app. It opens a camera and lets you, you know, purchase products, build a, you know, a, a basket. Can I, and can I demo this? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Does anybody have a blank charger and Slack? Uh, I'm going to take yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and so, what's cool is so you can, you know, you know, on the floor in your office, you can now. Uh, purchase products that you want and things like that. And it can be sort of embedded into the pantry or something that's separate and all that. But what's really, really cool about it is um, the job of the company um, that that might be baked into is to keep their employees happy and to engage yeah. them. Um, employee, in, yeah, well, employee, and employee engagement is, you know, is a, it's an epidemic. You know, 70%, according to Gallup, 70% of employees are disengaged, meaning they're not following the corporate narrative. They're not really uh, into what the company's into, particularly, you know, within the millennial sort of set. And so, of course, and so what we're able to do, yeah, with, there you go, with our app, I'm, I'm surrounded by them, um, is uh, what we're able to do with our app is the content management system that we've built, we're able to work with Corpcom um, to program the app so that when somebody at that company is going and purchasing a product, they're also earning points and they're looking at content that isn't just our feed and our right. cool music playlist and stuff right. like that. It's content that the company wants to put in front of um, that particular employee. Yeah. Um, and so we can do it you know, sort of at the tenant level, we're doing it at the building level, you know, where we can geofence an entire building and have it be welcome to Brookfield Place, powered by Newsstand, and have people be able to experience um, content that's geofenced in that way. And all of this stuff ties back to a physical experience um, that people can still have um, at the newsstand every single day. Um, so, um, and all of that to me is about day improvement. Yeah. That's just like making people's lives a little bit better and they should feel engaged because their companies are actually probably a lot cooler than they give yeah. them credit for. Um, they're just not communicated to in the right way. Can you throw like a random puppy into the app to pop up? <laughs> you know, we not actually, into the box. No, we actually did events. Let's not confuse these things. We did, event, we did some pop-up uh, shops uh, a year and a half ago or something like that and uh, we brought puppies in. You can rent puppies. It was like. What did they do with the it's like, a cheat. I don't it's like know. a total cheat. Puppies. You just, know. you know, yeah. The puppies three. make me happy, though. I got See three a puppy, of them. You could have one. It's really, it's a big, uh, no, it's kidding, a big insight. It's like sex sells. Kidding, you know, honey. Puppies yes, make kidding, people honey. happy. Kidding kids. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Matt, I love it. your product has definitely made my life easier. I love it. I've seen it in action. Um, how do we get Waltz in more buildings so we can get rid of this cumbersome, time consuming process of building access in office buildings? Thank you. Yeah, I love it. I want to dance right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, right, so our, our target market is 40 or so landlords and property managers um, that really control these, at least in New York, so the big, the big markets like New York, Boston, San Francisco, D.C., that control these lobbies and control entry points. So um, our, our strategy is to go to them. Um, once you get them using it, get it installed, get the tenants using it to get into the building, then tenants control access uh, in their own spaces and will sort of you know, sell into that. Um, but you know, from, the, from the user experience, I, I, it's sort of funny what you said about Internet 3.0. So Steve Case calls it the third wave of the Internet, which is basically bringing um, you know, connectivity and sort of smarts to everything else after communications. Um, and so I think the way that we really look at it is the expectation uh, of, of millennials. Sorry, Andrew. Um, uh, um, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so obviously old. And you start um, with, he's a legend. That yeah. means old. Anyway. Um, you know, the expectation is that, um, you know, I don't know, instant, instant gratification or sort of like um, instant results. And so, um, you know, we're very spoiled, all of us, by the fact that, you know, if I want to find something in the digital world, you know, it's very easy. You just write, Google does everything for me. And so right. how can you basically make someone's journey through the physical world as efficient and seamless as it is um, in, in, in the digital world? Um, and so, you know, like if you were to, uh, if, if you had a lot of traffic to your website, right, in the digital world, right, you just spin up another server and you're able to serve, to, 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 to handle more, more traffic and more people. In the physical world, that's not right so easy. So, um, a lot of it comes with scale, and a lot of it comes with these partnerships. So, we sort of don't see landlords and property managers as customers in in the traditional sense. We sort of see them as partners in expanding this footprint because the only way that this vision is achievable is through 
large scale right. the same way we see transit agencies. Right, right. Listen, well, so you, your company, you guys, you're, you guys are a beast in terms of the size of what you've built, and I don't think most people. It's been know an exciting three years. <laughs> how how fast you you guys have grown and how big yeah. your footprint is. What what do you uh, attribute the success to uh, of your? Growth? So I think we are really good sharers. And while that could sound trite, um, the ability to engage strategic partners, to your point, it can't be up to me to get the word out. We just hired our first salesperson. Amazing. It, it really was dependent on finding motivated partners. So Schlage. Mm -hmm. Schlage says, hey, listen, we're really good at hardware and we're pretty good at software, but there are use cases that we don't want to touch. Right. You know, we don't you know some of these platforms we we need like we got to talk because you don't want 17 apps right to enter a building and to do all of the things within that building you want one and your resident if you want one as a property manager think of your poor resident right 32 Overall, apps like, pay your rent yeah. d you know do this to get your dog walker it's a little crazy so schlage says listen that's on you we're gonna make this super awesome door lock and they did Right. Did a great job, great right. door lock. Um, Honeywell, Honeywell thermostats. Look at the build infrastructure. If you are in major commercial, you're gonna find smart thermostats. They're controlled through a huge BMS. Not so in student housing, not so in multifamily, because you have these disparate energy right. interests. You know, I wanna be comfortable, I wanna save money. You know, it's not my bill, I don't care. Right. So you have all these disparate interests. So we said Honeywell. If we enable your thermostats in the multifamily and student housing space, can you help us sell it? Right. Honeywell says, yeah, that's a good deal for sure. both of us. So we engage these partners. Leviton, lighting, right. uh -huh. there's Leviton switches in every commercial building, right. in, probably in the U.S. But what about multifamily? What about student housing? What about these buildings that have been so tech neglected? As soon as you make a use case that's profitable for your partner, right. Just share a little. Smart. I don't need all the money. Right. You know? <laughs> and, and if we can make a much bigger pie, right. that's, that's more opportunity for that's all of great. us. So we just, we, our partners help us tell our story. You know, and our partners are brands that build infrastructure trusts. Right. You know, we're not going with Bob's door lock. Right. No, no offense to Bob. Names. Right. Right. You know, and this, they already have relationships with distributors, installers, partners that they've always worked with. We're not disrupting that. We're just disrupting the tech. Right, right, brilliant. Yeah. Well, it's easy to see why you've grown so fast. Yeah, 250,000 units across the U.S. I feel the same way. <laughs> Listen, I, I will share with you. I got a haircut yesterday because if too. I hadn't, I'd have, come, I'd have come in here like that. It was a little, it was a little <laughs> hectic. This is getting a little hectic. I needed a filter uh, right here. Like Carl, no how, how do we get this? amazing product of yours in every building in yeah, America. Also, How do we do this? Well, I, What's the plan? I, I think that, you know, obviously, like speaking to having motivated partners is, is very important. And I think we're, we're blessed to have people on our, folks on our board from Colliers, Brookfield, CBRE, who are motivated to see us succeed. Because at the end of the day, if we succeed, they succeed because their tenants are happier. If their tenants are happier, they're gonna stay in the building longer. And so it works out for everyone. So you need to find people mutually interested parties, whether that's, and everyone needs to be motivated, starting with yourself. You right. need to be motivated, you need to keep your employees motivated, your team members motivated, and then everyone you partner with. And what, you know, the pods that we've created are the, not just, they didn't just come from me or from my co-founder, they are an amalgamation of all sorts of brilliance from all sorts of different people. Like we have a content partnership with Stop, Breathe, and Think, which is a wonderful app, meditation app. You should definitely check them out. Um, you know, obviously, like I said, Brookfield is already helping us. We have two designers that don't work internally, but built these beautiful pods for us, which we have the IP on the brand for, on the design for. So, I mean, at the end of the day, everyone, every piece of the pie, they were all motivated in some capacity to come together to provide a product that I think is pretty unique. And in regards to go to market, I think that getting in the door with these big landlords, you, you know, by the nature of, say, one of them who manages 450 million square feet of office, across you know, the world, that's a lot of blue chip tenants. It's a lot, that's like 2,000 plus individual companies that all, for the most part, they're not, I mean, sure, there's Googles, there's Microsofts, there's Apples in there that have these great workplaces of the future, but they still want pods. And you know, the folks that don't want pods are the ones that have the worst. It's kind of right. a paradox. It's like the people who need it the most. No shock. It, it's a yeah. little tough, yeah. but Angel I think, I think right. in time we'll have a compelling use case, um, but we gotta get there first. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Andrew, the marketing guru, um, 
how do you how are you going to scale newsstand? What's the plan? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's really simple in many ways. First of all, I mean, what we're trying to do, you know, within cities um, is we want to be like connected to other parts of people's journeys. That's why we're venturing into airports. We're doing things in transit and stuff like that. But uh, office is going to be massive for us. And, and we want to be able to, again, not just have a relationship with um, the asset owner and maybe have a space and a ground floor. What we're doing is we're going direct to the tenants um, with the blessing and partnership of the asset owner. Um, and it's a great thing to be able to put a newsstand into your office um, because it becomes this communications tool and it becomes a great way to uh, just make your employers uh, employees happier. And yeah, look, there's a lot of kind of engineering. How do we get the right kit of parts that can be mailed out and installed and supply chain, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But this is not, as they say, rocket surgery. There's, there's a lot of companies out there that have built up a lot of infrastructure, whether it's, you know, the Airmarks or whomever else in the world. Um, and, you know, we're going to be, you know, building ourselves. We will also partner um, with other companies. We have an operating partner in airports because the idea of us, you know, figuring out how to, you know, build giant operations um, at LAX and SFO and these places where we just launched um, doesn't make sense for us. What we want to do instead is design the stores, um, have the tech stack that gets deployed, develop the merchandising, develop some private label product, put in, you know, uh, things like swap charge, stuff like that to enhance the experience for people. But we want to bring that down to a micro level and really have this sort of last meter access um, to people in a, in a meaningful way. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, we're just going to hit it hard in terms of office. We're also going to be um, going into a lot of residential. We've gone to our first uh, residential property with Durst uh, recently at the, the VIA building, and that's going really well. Um, and uh, yeah, look, in many ways, it's sort of an asymmetrical kind of battle, I guess. There's a lot of convenience retail. It's so funny, that's not the way we think of ourselves. We really do think of ourselves as more of a media and technology company that happens to engage with people through a physical portal that is convenience uh, retail oriented. But, um, you know, kind of screw those guys. Like, it's not like they're doing a great job. It's not like people are like, oh my God, I love 7-Eleven or I love, you know, Hudson News. They're amazing. <laughs> No, I mean, it, it's, look, I think that they, they do a good job for what they are. They're big businesses. But, you know, how many office towers do I need to be in before somebody who has a, a store on the street is like, man, wh what happened to that very thin margin I used to have? Yeah. And I think that we can satisfy people um, in a really, really meaningful way, um, you know, through that. And, um, you know, so, so it's, it's not a super complicated plan. Um, what we're also doing is scaling our audience. And, and that's what I'm, you know, as proud of uh, as, as anything else, which is, um, you know, people come into Newsstand, they figure out we have an awesome app. They then spend time in that app. Obviously, when we start getting into office and we're actually now the communications channel for your company, um, to Matt's point in terms of having security access, things like that, we're now on the deck of your phone right. regardless. Yeah. But what I'm proud of is you know, right now we have 80 stories per week on average um, read by people in our app. They just love our curation. Yeah. Um, and what that will enable over time is bits of e-commerce and other things that we'll be able to do once you start to aggregate um, an audience. Um, but, and a lot of that growth will happen through partnerships. I, I love the way, I, I definitely don't need all the money either. Um, and I think that just send it to Michael. Just send it to me. Um, I mean, come on. No, There's so I, much so of this I could do out of the goodness of my heart. Nice. At some Good point, job. you know, I mean. Yeah, and so I, I think it's. food on the table. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's about finding, yeah, it's just about finding those mutual yeah. wins. Um, yeah. Great. Matt, um, I, I kind of know a lot about your company and your playbook. Uh, right now, you know, I, I know that the Waltz uh, product, I've seen it, I know where it is. What's next? What does the future roadmap look like for the company in terms of the product itself? Yeah, so um, I think that we're seeing more and more that there needs to be a combination of a couple products because, um, you know, I, we're, we're, we can get a vast majority of people on mobile, but there's still people who want to use a card. Or, um, you know, there's people who want to use their phone in one, um, you know, one use case, right, and, and, and maybe want to use something else in another use case. And so I think the key for the product evolution is being able to serve 
all of these different use cases in one platform. And so that's why we're um, um, aggressively pursuing um, and, and, and developing or incorporating facial recognition into our product right now. So um, when we sort of set out in building the hardware and designing the hardware two and a half years ago, one of the things that we said is, um, you know, let's make the hardware ready for facial recognition because, you know, it's, it's obvious, you know, you, you don't you have to, you can watch Minority Report to know that right, that's sort of where everything is going to go. And um, to be able to say these existing pieces of hardware that are already on your turnstiles and are already on your walls or wherever the, the entry point is, all it requires is a software upgrade to run facial recognition is a pretty powerful thing and um, you know from a business perspective doesn't stymie our growth now um, and also allows us to sort of stay where we are and sort of stay in these places later um, and so whether that's partnering with with companies to provide that service or um, integrating sort of other aspects of this right it, it's more than just a facial recognition algorithm there's there's sort of much more that that, that goes into that with different integrations and whatnot so um, I think that um, I think that's clearly where where this market Smart. is going and and the other thing is sort of trying to figure out how we can um, work with others in the same space so um, we're working with um, a few of the tenant experience platforms we've got uh, a couple of things that we're working on um, with Newstand that um, that we're going to announce right. very soon. So um, I think it's more about trying to, with partners, create a cohesive product that has access and a lot of these other things that we've been talking about, um, rather than just sort of single products. So I don't know that anyone is going to, or I don't know that that the masses are going to switch from cards or something to mobile just for the sake of changing the form factor, right? We can see that Apple Pay has that problem, right? right? It offers nothing other than the same thing I can get if I dip my yeah. card and or swipe my card. But when you use the different form factor of mobile to enable greater experiences or greater utility, that's when the value happens. And so that's why I'm really excited about what we're gonna announce soon with, with, with Newsstand and others. Yeah, I think what, what's interesting to me, I was watching, I was listening to a comedian, I think it was uh, Dimitri Martin, he was just like, very funny guy, but he was he's talking about like going into bathrooms now, and you know you want like to like get the water, and you're like trying to get the water on, and you just feel ridiculous, and then it's like you want a towel, and you're just sitting there doing these weird oh, gestures, goodness. and and like I understand why a building would want to do that because it saves paper and it saves water, and like that's good for the environment or whatever. But that is a decision from you know an asset owner or whomever else to like do that. It, this was not something where people were just like, oh man, I gotta tell you, that faucet was just, that was so bad. Yeah. It was fine. Yeah. You know, maybe it's a little more sanitary, not touching anything, but things are designed very often from a commercial standpoint to meet commercial needs. Right. And I think, you know, to, to Matt's point, I think what is incumbent upon all of us is like, how do you develop stuff that's like the way, what people wanna do? How do they spend their lives? By leading them as well. I'm not saying just follow exactly what they want. But you know what you also can't do is sit there with a checklist with an asset owner and be like, oh, so you need that too? Okay, we'll build that in. Okay, cool. That's not going to create a, create a great human product. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think you need to have something that is inspired by the way that people actually live their lives and what they want to do with their days and lean into that and, and find ways of kind of greasing the skids on their behalf. You know, And for us, like a lot of that's like, oh, people like products and they like looking at cool content. Like give them an app that gives them yeah. cool content and access to products. Yeah. And then like then we'll figure out how to bake in some of the other stuff that you might need. Like, oh, you need security access? Cool. We can do security access, yeah. or this guy can. You know, so so I think there's it starts from a very human perspective, I yeah. think. Yeah, no, he, he's like, like like we sell B2B and so what the enterprise customer, what the what the real estate executive who wants these products to be or, or think that, that they should be. Does, does not necessarily reflect what the user or Correct. the occupant is going to want or going to find valuable. So it's, I, that's why I, I view us, I'm sure th these guys are the same, it's B2B to C. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, of if, the C, if, if, the, if the B to C part is not successful, the B to B part is that's not right. gonna be successful. And so yeah. I think it's interesting to see like there's a lot of these consumer products that are out there now or consumer facing products that are B to B sales that are coming out in the commercial real estate world, yeah. how many of them 
are well, successful or not because yeah. was it actually forged like yeah. in the consumer yeah. world like we you know we started out just like here's a store but we wanted to have an app tied to it yeah. and see how we engage people knowing that we wanted to expand in this way but you have to build the product based right. on how people are going to use it every day and really hone and refine that well, and Matt mentioned it uh, right in your introduction uh, you you have these moments that you're speaking to in what you're enabling and I think that's very much what we look at in the B2B to C, the moments that we own as an application are the moment you come home and you unlock your door, the moment you leave and you lock it back, the moment you go to bed, the moment you wake up. What can we do to grease the skids yeah. in those moments? You know, what, first let's just make a great experience, you know, none of this. Yeah. But then, <laughs> what, what else can we add? What, how can we enable you to live a better life as the consumer? And yeah. of course, B2B, I mean, they have this giant access and control system and they're, they're pleased that they have you know, better security. Um, but, but in those moments, how do we enable the human experience? And there's a, there's a creativity involved there, right? Absolutely. And then it kind of ties back to what you guys were talking about that at the end of the day, a lot of people don't necessarily, there's a lot of products out there that people might not know that they actually want. Like yeah. you, nine years ago, if you went and told Tishman Spire, hey, do you want a company to come in there and manage your conference centers? They'd be like, no, our conference centers are fine. Right. Yeah. We know we have some events in there. We throw in some fruit and get pulled in spring bottles, and that's <laughs> it. Look at a company like Convene. Right. Look what they have done. They, no one knew that co-working or conference and events were something that was in high demand, but they do a, an amazing job at it. Like, yeah, you do. know, hats off to them. But I think that going to you with the creativity, it's like you have to kind of, you have to know that there's a demand for something that might not exist yeah. fundamentally just yet. And you don't, and you have to also be careful what what you listen to based on your the feedback you're getting because a lot of people don't even know what they want and they might even just talk for the sake of talking about something that might be nice but if you're like hey do you actually really want that if that was in place would you pay for that they're like no Guilty. you know so it's it's on us to figure yeah. out that stuff with our own yeah. creativity but at the end of the day you have a, a product that a consumer loves because yeah. you know everyone knows this but Steve Jobs won right he beat uh, Bill Gates you know, in, in, in a certain sense, the, the consumer wins, enterprise is second, but I'm obviously a B2B business and I think a lot of us are. Like, when you get into that space, at the end of the day, it's, they're consumers. The employee itself sure. is a consumer, the tenant yeah. is a consumer. Well, it's so funny because one of the things we always used to talk about in, in like the, the media or advertising world was like, you know, they'd be like, oh, well, this is a B2B campaign. And we'd be like, dude, the person, it's like, he's, they don't stop being consumer, like, when they go to work. You're like, oh, I'm sorry, please only give me messages that are about accounting software. I don't want to read anything that, it's like, people are integrated, sentient beings. Like, you, so, yeah, you need to kind of keep that in mind. Well, I think uh, this was terrific. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. Um, you know, for me, I think the most exciting theme that's happening in CRE Tech community is this emphasis on the tenant experience, right? I mean, so much of it is about, as, we, as I talked earlier, data and uh, information. But I think the greatest revolution that's really happening is that people are starting to pay attention to the human experience. And Felicity and Carl and Andrew and Matt are leading the way in creating better work environments for people that inhabit them. So. I applaud you for all what you're doing because I know it's hard work. I know it's not the easiest route in building things, uh, but I think you're really changing an industry. So thanks for uh, spending some time with me and uh, for all that you're doing for our industry.